Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to do semiconductor analysis in the park. So normally you would need a metallurgical microscope to do this kind of analysis, but I don't have one of those and there are a few thousand dollars. But that's okay because in today's video, I'm going to show you a setup that costs about $50, assuming that you already have a DSLR camera. The first part of the setup involves using an adapter that attaches to your camera mount. So that'll be a Sony specific, Canon specific, or whatever brand of camera you have. I've got a Sony E and that adapts to an M42 thread. And if you try buying one of these, you'll probably also find a T2 adapter. It's still 42 millimeters, but I think it's a slightly different thread pitch. So one of them is one millimeter thread pitch and the other is 0.75, I think. And the next thing you need is an M42 to RMS microscope adapter. And the next part of the setup involves using a 4X microscope objective. And I also have a 10X objective, so I'll be trying that out as well. And finally, I'll be using this little uh, bendable tripod thing to put the camera on. So today I'll be analyzing this silicon wafer and also this silicon wafer. And I'll also take a look at these dice chips. So these are for uh, an MCU. And hopefully I can get a look at these flash memory chips if they don't blow away in the wind. So in order to attach the microscope objective to the camera, I'll have to take that lens off. Okay, here's an example of what the full setup looks like. So you can see where uh, I've got a close-up view of the chips. So this is your $50 Park Bench Semiconductor Analysis Kit. So it's a little bit hard to see the screen in the sunlight, but... So you can push the wafer around and uh, check out some of the interesting features. So I think that unusual looking part there is probably used for calibration and uh, you know maybe testing and some stuff. So those little black dots in the center, I'm sure, pretty sure that means that uh, those are reject chips. And that's probably why this wafer ended up in my possession because uh, there was just too many bad chips on this. All right, let's check out the next wafer here. So you can see as you rotate the uh, wafer, the interference patterns change. And again, there's one of those interesting calibration patterns. All right, so I've switched the four times objective to the 10 times objective to get a little bit more detail. So you can see I have to go a lot more vertical because the, uh, the focal plane is a lot more thin. And if you look at the monitor here, you can uh, kind of barely make that out. So here's a few of what you can see through the 10 times objective. Those square bond points are usually around uh, 100 microns. So that gives you an idea of what the scale of what you're looking at here is. So if those square bond points are about 100 microns wide, then you're probably seeing uh, lots of detail here that's, you know, in the order of 10 microns wide. I'm not sure about the history of this wafer, but uh, some of those large uniform errors are probably memory storage, flash. If you know what it is, be sure to leave a comment. All right, so here's a look at some of those diced wafers of the MCU. And once again, I'm pretty sure those bond points are on the order of uh, 100 microns. So as you can see, you can make out a decent amount of detail here. Okay, here's the final chip. Um, this is the flash memory die. I thought that I lost this one because it uh, it actually blew away and landed on the ground, but I was able to find it. So as you can see, this is used for data storage, so there's a very large uniform area. Now something to think about if you attach an objective to your camera this way is this objective was designed to use a focal length of 160 millimeters. That's what that 160 is for that's written on there. But the catch is that some of the corrective properties of the lens won't work perfectly. So you may get things like extra spherical aberration or chromatic aberration. You also won't get the indicated magnification ratio. If you put it closer to the camera, you'll get less magnification. If you put it farther away, you'll get more magnification. You can also use extender adapters like this, and that'll look something like this. Okay, that's it for today. If you like this video, check out some of my other videos on semiconductors and chip analysis.